हरे कृष्णा हाउ कैन वी गाइड आवर चिल्ड्रन ड्यूरिंग देयर टीन एज फेज ऑफ लाइफ आंसर देर आर फ्यू फेजेस इन लाइफ एज टर्ब्यूलेंट एज द टीन एज सो I one of my main services writing and there's a prominent author who was once asked how do you get ideas for writing that author said that if you have survived teenage and adolescence then you have enough material to write throughout your life so the point i'm trying to make over here is that teenage is a very difficult phase rather than thinking oh my children are being so difficult and how do do i have the skills to how do i parent the children in their teenagers from their perspective also we need to see that they are going through a extremely turbulent phase in life and it's not that they are being difficult it is that they may, of course we may find that the way they behave is difficult is different and difficult uh, but they are themselves in great difficulties we say what difficulties they are financially well taken care of they are in good age they have a good career ahead of them they just have to apply themselves study and have basic discipline and they have bright life ahead of them but it's not that simple we may compare them with our generation at this time i was completely undistracted i focused on my career i obeyed my parents and i made something with my life similarly they can uh no that's a very different reference point in my small understanding being a teenager even 30 years ago was very very different from being a teenager now the sheer amount of distractions the sheer amount of would say multiplied peer pressure coming not just through the college environment or the school environment but also through the social media that is enormous from a psychological perspective teenage is the time when a person is growing through a identity crisis they are going through and hopefully they will be growing through generally when a child is very small then they are identified as the first thing they ask oh, what is your name and who are your parents whose son or daughter are you that is so that i that is their defining identity at that time and when they are adults they will have their own maybe education degrees jobs they have their own identity reasonably established here we are talking about a functional identity not the fundamental identity as souls so in the teenage phase they are too old to be satisfied with the identity that i am just xyz son or daughter and they are too young to have still carved out an identity for themselves that they can that is respectable in the world's eyes and that is why they are struggling to have an identity and that that's why they are very vulnerable to peer pressure to cultural influences oh, what do the cool kids do i want to do those so that i will also be considered a cool so so this itself is a psychological turbulent phase and on top of that there is the biological turbulence that comes when puberty comes in and the hormones start uh, getting secreted or a different kind of hormones are getting secreted and then beyond that there is the socio cultural pressure today where there is there are there are so many distractions so many temptations and it's extremely difficult phase so the whole point of this is that don't take that their difficult behavior as a rebellion against us or a rebellion against the values that we are taught them don't take even if they behave in a di- distressing way don't take it personally it's very difficult because they will be speaking things to us but it's m- whenever they are speaking they may speak or they may be rude they may be under unresponsive they may be close they may be rebellious but in one sense they are not they may be reacting in their behavior with us but they are not reacting only to us there's a lot going on in their head and in their lives and they are often reacting to that 
so that is the first thing it's it's they are in great difficulty and rather than just seeing that they are the why are they being so difficult and am i a bad parent because of this can you focus that they are in difficulty and try to understand that and see how we can help them in that so having said this the second point would be then understanding them so sometimes parents feel that no, i just they just don't hear me anymore they just don't listen to me they think you live in a different world you don't know what i am going through and they just don't want to listen to me they become so disrespectful so dis- discourteous so disconnected well yes that's the phase because from their perspective you know, even one generation older is two generations older it's almost like people are uh, to use a teenage word the dinosaurs you live in a different world entirely there is a quote attributed to mark twain when i was 14 my father was such a fool that i could barely stand to be in his presence but now i am 21 and i am amazed at how much the old guy has learned in these 7 years so now it's not that the father learned because the father may also have learned some things but the point is that the way one views the world at 14 when one is going through teenage and the way 21 is at least in the past with the time and more as a person is settling down in life they have if we got a job or they have got into a responsible career so a career trajectory at least if not a career then there's literally it's a different perspective so that is again a point that we try to understand what they are going through rather than uh, rather than resenting that they are not understanding our good intentions and they are treating us as if we don't know anything we can show them that we want to understand them so if at any time they want to talk now oh, oh mom dad today something interesting happened in my college my friend something said something interesting well then whatever you're doing just give them some time put aside the phone put aside whatever you're doing just hear them and he- hear them to understand not to judge and give a summary judgment understand where they are coming from what they are what is going on in their lives what is going on in their minds and they need to feel that we care for them if they feel that the only thing we care for is controlling them is a different from caring for them and caring for controlling them if they feel that we care only for controlling them then they will completely close us off and we may try to assert control over them and we might be able to maybe as long as they are in our homes as long as they are financially dependent on us but eventually they may once they get their independence uh then they may just to become very rebellious and resentful so so in some ways we may be very concerned that they obey me and they make the right choices however when well, that is important no doubt but more than just obeying us or they making right choices what will be a far greater or far greater value of them is for them is they have the right relationship with us and sometimes the right relationship means that we let them learn from their mistakes so now what does that mean it's it's very painful for us to see somebody whom we love for care for somebody whom we have guarded in our life till now guarded zealously from all troubles and dangers now they are making choices that are getting them into trouble and how can we stand back well it's not a matter of standing back it is a matter of recognizing that they are souls whom krishna has given free will and we can't take away their free will even krishna doesn't do that we have a responsibility but beyond that responsibility we have to uh, help them make good choices not control their choices as chanakya pandit says that panch varshani lalayet dash varshani taadayet prapte tu shodashe vas varshe putram mitra vadacharet so yes in the first 5 years pamper them pamper them means more that offer love to them in the next 5 years next 10 years discipline them now the principle is uh, let's focus on the principle not just the chronology over here did uh, it discipline till 15 it's not that ex- uh, it is not at the 15th birthday suddenly the no more disciplining or the from 15 birthday 15 birthday nothing but discipline 
it's a principle 50 after 15 he says just treat them like friends so the principle is that in different ages in their life chanakya pandit is also recognizing and and recommending that parents need to treat their children differently so disciplining also doesn't mean that there is no law pampering doesn't mean that there is no regulation but rather there is a balance of both but as they grow older we need to acknowledge and respect their free will and act as a resource for their free will for their intelligence so that they can choose wisely in child in their early childhood we will be making the choices for them and that's how it is a small child can't choose which school i'll go to some amount of uh, a child is just not able to get along in one school because of something that's different but the parents decide so how afterwards however it is the parents can be one resource for the child to take decisions they cannot be the sole decision maker and that will just lead to rebellion so in one sense krishna he is god uh, but even he doesn't impose on arjuna's free you say arjuna is already a wise person and uh, my kids are not that's definitely true but the principle is that we can't encroach on people's free will now, that doesn't mean that we don't give any advice no rather we need detachment detachment from the expectation that our advice will be gratefully taken and accepted and abided by no that may not happen so again this is i'll repeat this point it's a difficult phase to be in uh, for the parents and all the more for the children so during this phase if we strive to become a resource for them so hear them show them that we want to understand them and then then after that become a resource for them okay you know this this is okay you are thinking of these choices what do you think will happen with this in my experience when people have done this this is what has happened okay so if you see krishna when arjuna says that the mind is very difficult to control krishna is god krishna said what is this difficult in controlling the mind just be determined you should be will do it krishna doesn't adopt that holier than thou judgmental attitude krishna says yes undoubtedly samshay mahaba ho manodur nikram chalam the mind is very difficult to control so for our certain choices that they are deliberating over they say what is there to choose this is what you should be doing but for them those choices may be very difficult so if we understand try to understand them then that itself will ensure that the the relationship doesn't become very alienated and in this situation it may be best not to compare them with other children too much in some ways comparison is unavoidable but in our community there may be one child who might be who might be very responsible maybe materially very committed in their uh, career is devotionally very committed in their devotional practices and then we hold that child as a model now whether that is an inspiration for for our child our teenage child to become like that or whether that particular remi- reminder also is for our child simply a our indictment of how bad that child is our child is rather as compared to that so whenever we might be speaking something for inspiring them but whether it is whether it is offering inspiration to them or whether they are seeing it as our criticizing them we have to look at that's why hearing or just speaking to them instructing but hearing from them is also important and in one sense krishna is their greatest guide even in the turbulent phase krishna is in their hearts krishna is in our hearts and it may be best to prepare for turbu- for the turbulence of adolescence well in advance so from childhood if we have developed a healthy relationship with them in terms of both love and discipline and we have helped the children connect with krishna through giving them bhakti practices giving them exposure to bhakti practices that connection with krishna will also stand them in good stead externally they may reject some of the uh, some of the de- particular spiritual practices but those spiritual impressions will still be there in their hearts and there having connected with krishna 
will be there like a compass within them which they will turn towards in due course of time so it may take some time for them and it's this is sometimes the time when we have to exhibit the virtue of detachment karmanne va adhikar aste mahafaleshu kadachana that mahafaleshu means yes at this point i did my part in parenting as well as i could but now let me be detached detached doesn't mean irresponsible detached means that we are available to our children but at the same time we don't impose on them and it might be helpful if there are two parents and they the two play different roles in general when we offer love there is there are two aspects to it there is accepting and there is expecting and that means you know whatever whatever happens in your life whatever you do you're still my child i love you i'll be with you there is the accepting part and there is the expecting part you have so much potential and if you pull yourself together there's so much more you can do so that expecting part is also there so that's now the both are natural part, natural aspects of loving someone when we love someone we accept them as they are and we expect them to become so much more so to manifest their potential more and more so the, how do we balance this that's why that's why tradition there always been two parent families single parent is very difficult although single parents may also do sometimes a laudable role it's extremely difficult so generally one parent can be having a more accepting role the other parent can be having more of a expecting role and that way even if the child is doing something wrong they won't feel that i am being rejected by my parents my parents may disapprove of my choices and we can make our disapproval known but disapproval shouldn't lead to rejection if sometimes we make it you know you are wrong and one day you will realize it and you will come crawling back to me if we make it like that we communicate like that we, there's no acceptance over there there's only demanding not even expecting demanding then just to just to rebel against us they may take that choice and even when that choice turns out to be wrong because it was made into an because they felt it was an ego issue i will not go back to my parents so that should never happen so that's why yes it's a, it's a, there's there are love means boundaries but love has both there are bonds and there are boundaries so one parent sets the boundaries by expecting one parent shows is a, maintains the bonds by accepting of course it's not that black and white both parents will play both roles to some extent but to varying degrees which parent is playing the more prominent role then that will help also the teenager to have some anchor while facing the storm that is there in their world and in their mind and ultimately as i said krishna is their guide krishna is our guide if we pray to krishna not just that the children make the right choices but that we also get the right words to guide them effectively during those situations during those that phase of life then they will weather the storm and they will emerge wiser and if we have focused on being a resource for them on having a healthy blend of accepting and expect, expecting then the relationship will not only survive that uh, the turbulence of teenage years but it will emerge much stronger thank you very much hare krishna